So in this video, I'm going to show you my Trossera channel routing jig. Basically, this jig allows me to position a neck in the center and then place the router on the neck and using these guides, carve a straight line. This jig is very simple. It has a base and then two fences. In this case, the base is about 18 and a half inches, whereas the fences are 26 inches long and about two and three quarters inches high. The fences are glued in and then I put a few finishing nails. Although I have pocket holes, I didn't end up using them. As you can also notice, there are four bolts poking in. These bolts are, are adjustable and allow me to fine-tune the position of the center line. They also help to hold down the neck in a sturdy way as the router is moving. So I will be carving the truss right channel on this neck and I will also be doing it on this neck and the difference between these two First is the width is different, but also the main important thing is that this one has a headstock veneer while this one doesn't, and that will make a difference of how I use this jig. So I already found the center line on this neck, and then I'm going to draw the limits of this truss rod. So this is how I use this jig. First position it into the jig and because there's an angle headstock it needs to be uh, hanging outside the table. Next I'll clamp the jig down to the base. I'm going to find my center line by basically dropping the router down and making sure it's that center and then doing that for the back and the front bolts and that in this case it's dead on so I'm going to tighten the bolts Do the same thing with the front, and that looks good. And I'm going to tighten these, and I'm going to go back and check the back ones once again. Okay, so the neck is aligned perfectly with the center of the fences and it's sturdy and it won't move. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put a stop block at the position of the end of the truss rod. So I'm going to position the router bit at that point. So this will stop the router from going any further. So at this point, I'm ready to make my first cut. I'm only going to take a shallow pass and do it a few times until I get the proper depth for this truss rod.
So here's the finished channel. Since the tip of this truss rod is thicker than the rest, I had to use a larger router bit here to open a larger gap. Um, but I had a little slip here as you could see. But it fits in perfectly. So after a lot of fine tuning, uh, the headstock is properly in place and is stable. I basically use the router bit to align the neck. Now as I mentioned previously this neck has a headstock veneer so as the router is riding on the neck when it reaches the headstock veneer it's going to bump into it. So I can't use this jig as is with this head with this neck. So I created these two bridges which basically fit into the jig and allow a higher height for the router to sit on. So as I route the channel, when I get to the headstock veneer, it's not going to be a problem. So here it is all routed out and it's nearly perfect, just a tiny little hiccup here but the uh, truss rod fits in perfectly. So the way to figure out the depth of the bit for routing is by first calculating the depth of the truss rod with a caliper, then marking that depth and then bringing down the bit until to that point. <laughs> 